I'm going to end by presenting a failed experiment. Oh, nice. <laughs> Maybe it would be more interesting than the not failed one. <laughs> the not failed one? Yeah. yeah. Um, Who knows? So, um, like, one of the outcomes of the um, discussion we had uh, when we discussed uh, community detection was that one key point of GFE is that you see the layout happening in live. Uh, so here it was pretty fast. So, okay. So, uh, so yes, you, you can see the, the layout happening. So at the beginning, I think it was also a technical um, challenge because, like, we don't know how to automatically stop a layout. So we need to have someone like clicking on the button telling it uh, it's mm -hmm. over. Uh, but on, for the community detection, it's not uh, as clear because like the algorithm will always finish. But you are uh, left with this coloring. And so um, something which could be nice is to display to the users what is actually happening when the algorithm runs and see the color of the nodes changing to see and try and understand how the, the algorithm is actually working. Okay. So I try to make a firework. So basically the idea is the following. I will display a graph that will end up uh, completely clusterized and we'll, we'll see the community. But at the beginning, they will all start with a random color and they will like move um as the algorithm moves so the data was provided by Mathieu uh, he extracted it from a run uh, of the algorithm in Gephi and so you can like see the the color pops and so on oh. so this is kind of nice it looks like a firework but I guess it's a bit epileptic and it looks like it's failed I don't know maybe it's not but like if you see the things happening is that clear to you what's happening and I'm personally I, I find it quite entrancing and beautiful but i don't find it very clear and so what we tried afterwards was to say okay the colors are random so it might be completely um, epileptic and we don't understand what's happening so instead of using random color you, we are going to position the nodes on the color space and tells okay if you are on the left you are going to be redder if you are on the right you are going to be bluer and so on and we are going to try and see if it changes anything just want to say that it's really smooth on his uh, computer, but the rendering in uh, in OBS is uh, really <laughs> laggy. Yeah. But it's quite a great smooth firework uh, when it's uh, lo locally yeah. uh, launched. <laughs> it looks to be uh, like the perfect example of how to make some video compression fail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so this is the part where we are trying to position like nodes on the color space, and so it's less epileptic, but like things are moving there but we don't see them happening like you have to be very careful with your eyes to see things moving yeah. so it's not that helpful either uh, one other thing we tried was to uh, actually like not uh, give nodes entering a new community the color of the community but like try to mix the colors of the community when you do so but if you do so everything goes to a mushy browny gray <laughs> and it's so sad okay <laughs> so yeah this is basically uh, the failed experiment That's okay it for me. thank you i don't agree that it i mean this what you did was a fa is a failure i think that what we showed at the beginning and the experiment that you did are very synergetic and i think that by crossing the two maybe we could find a way to see the um the algorithm unfold in real time, but having kind of more less e epileptic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that could be something that could be worked on later on. Yeah. Let's try. Uh, Paul uh, is asking, maybe don't lose the color before the number of community has been reduced to a threshold. I think we tried somehow. Mm. Did you try? Uh, this is, that was the idea that we tried to work with. Uh, with Mathieu. We use the color space in a iterative way. So at the beginning, all the nodes are the same gray color. And as we, we segment the sy uh, Scilab colors, color uh, wheel progressively, and the colors kind of focus themselves. And they, as soon as they uh, occupy more space with the number of uh, not really occupy more space, but they grow in size. So, so yeah, this is kind of the intu the same intuition that we had. If we iteratively uh, segment the color space from less um, saturated to more saturated, we kind of get this. And uh, but this is something that we need definitely to try on the network because the work that we did was abstracted on it from it, but it helps in seeing how it could be applied to a network. 
So is there a way to, for that algorithm specifically, is there a way to stop and start it or no? It, it, it always just has a quick run. You can stop and start it if you want. Okay, because uh, what you were saying about it being kind of epileptic, you could always, I guess, let the algorithm either stop and start it uh, at certain intervals so that it's slower and easier to see for the user. Or you could just run the algorithm real quick and at, like saves uh, the states of where it was at, at a certain point and then show that to the user later or they can kind of peruse it at their own lead after the fact. Yes. Uh, but those are some ideas, I don't know. I wanted to do that using a slider, but I'm too lazy to do so, and it's quite complicated. <laughs> but uh, one issue that you have with this algorithm is that at one point, like, it hierarchically, hierarchically zoom out. And so uh, basically, when you don't see one node moving from one community to the other, you, you see a lot of nodes moving to other lot of nodes at once and at the end it becomes like flashy and, and so on and so i guess somehow we should maybe like merge uh, this idea and our idea by actually performing the merge and see what really happens within the algorithms 